लाइव हो गए अब देखो तुम ये सी एस के चैनल पर जाकर यूट्यूब पर चालू है या नहीं हेलो अरे थोड़ा बिजी था हूँ लाइव स्ट्रीम कर रहा हूँ मैं पढ़ता हूँ तुम्हें पाँच बजे स्टार्ट होना हाँ हाँ ठीक है हाँ ठीक है मैं करता हूँ करता हूँ करता हूँ थोड़ा हाँ खाया हेलो अरे थोड़ा बिजी था हूँ लाइव स्ट्रीम कर रहा हूँ मैं पढ़ता हूँ तुम्हें पाँच बजे स्टार्ट हो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन ऑल ऑफ यू डूइंग वेल हेलो सर हेलो और यू धनंजय यस सर गुड इवनिंग सर आई एम दी होस्ट फॉर टूडे इवेंट सर Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dhananjay. Yes, sir. So, you have set everything up. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I have set everything up. Like we are waiting for the guest, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think guest. Uh, one minute. I'm just talking. Okay, sir. So Dhanan, Dhanan, just look at it. I think the whole, the the uh, the speaker is trying to join. Can you accept the invite? Uh, just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Yeah, he is going to do it. Okay, sir. Yeah, I think he has done it. So Dhanan, Dhanan, just look at it. I think the whole, the the. Uh, The speaker is trying to join. Can you accept the invite? Uh, just a minute. His name is Suman Dara. Can Suman you just check it? Sir, so just a minute. I mean, in fact, whoever is uh, yeah, asking you to allow, you can it. allow them. It's fine. Okay, Only sir. those yeah, no contact are got the link. So, Dhanan, Dhanan, just, just look at it. I think the whole the the. the one minute, uh, Suman. Here, let me look at it. The speaker is trying to join. Can you accept the invite? Uh, just a minute. His name is Suman Dara. Can Suman you just Dara. check it? Sir, so 
I mean, the effect over is being used all over India. Yes, sir. He will have the host countries. Let me ask you. Uh, yes, sir. I guess he has joined, sir. Um, it's fine. Oh, Only yes, those yeah, no contacts have done. got the link. So yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Just look at it. I think the whole... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Suren, thank you. I think Suman, yes, finally you are in. Yes, sir. I think, yeah. So we are all set. Okay, sir. So we shall start wrong. So good evening, yeah. everyone. Uh, I am Dhananjay Singh, a final year undergraduate student and a member of CS. Yeah, yeah. So on the behalf of Civil Engineering Society IIT Hyderabad, I welcome you all. So Team CS is pleased to present you all with the industrial seminar on analysis and design of elevated metro structures to be delivered by our alumnus, Engineer Suman Dhala. So let me uh, give a brief about the uh, about uh, achieved this. So Engineer Suman Dhala has pursued his graduation from Usmania University and post-graduation in structural engineering from IIT So initially he worked in Jacobs on Middle East Bridge projects and currently working in Midas at IIT Mumbai. So overall he has seven plus years of extensive technical consulting experience for bridges and building projects. He enjoys providing solutions to engineers on sophisticated projects, which range from bridge engineering, building engineering, and spatial mechanics problem. So this was a brief introduction about our guest. Uh, I would, on the behalf of CS, I would like to thank Dr. Professor uh, Dr. Surendranath Sumala, who is associate professor in structural engineering, for organizing this seminar. And uh, I would like to welcome HOD of our department, Professor S. Surya Prakash. Uh, sir, I request you to say a few words on this. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dhananjay. I think uh, I really appreciate all your efforts in coordinating the Civil Engineering Society activities. And today, it's in fact, it is a special day because uh, we are joined by one of our own alumni. In fact, Suman did uh, his master's thesis with me. And uh, it looked like it happened yesterday, but actually it has happened, you know, almost five, six years ago. He has graduated and he has joined the corporate world in the last five years. I think he has been doing very well. And Midas is one of the very popular companies. Uh, those who are in bridge engineering community, we always use Midas software for design. And just like in buildings, we have, uh, you know, CSC softwares like, you know, ETAP safe. For bridges, it's actually Midas. So I'm really, really delighted to have Suman here with us. And uh, just like many of you who are in the final year undergraduate and most of you are uh, MTech and PhD students, uh, you know, you can interact with Suman and, uh, you know, listen to him about his experiences, how it is in the corporate world and, you know, how was his job, how was his job experience so far, because he's in a quick span. In fact, he has worked on many prestigious projects uh, that are there around the world. You know, it is uh, really, you know, very, very heartening to see. So with these few words and I uh, welcome once again, uh, Suman, uh, really pleasure to have you here, Suman. I think with this, I think the floor is yours. You know, you can take about 50 minutes for your uh, uh, presentation and uh, followed by 10 minutes of interaction. Suman, so you can start sharing your screen and get going. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's good to see you here, sir. And uh, thanks, Dhananjay, for the kind introduction. So I have, I'll share the screen. First of all.
Yeah. Can you all uh, see the screen? Yes. Yes. We are able to see it, and it is also uh, we are able to hear you well, Suman. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad to present to my uh, own college students. Uh, it's a pleasure for me, and uh, you're all always welcome, as Sir has said, to interact with me. At the end of the presentation, I'll send you my email address, or <clears throat> you can join me in LinkedIn, and we can have a chat. So today, uh, what? Uh, the topic that I'm going to present is analysis and design of elevated metro structures. So, can I know the audience pool, sir? Here, the PhD students, you have master's students and the undergraduate? Yeah, mostly MTech and PhD students, uh, Suman. And maybe undergraduate students, maybe very few, but I think, you know, they would also be very familiar with the design aspects. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, all right, so this would be elevated metro structures. Mostly, I'll focus on that. So, all of you are in Haiti, Hyderabad. You have, you must have seen our Hyderabad Metro Rail. So, that was constructed. Uh, that was constructed by LNT, and the design primarily was done. There are like five stretches. One stretch was done by Jacobs, which was uh, uh, CHTM Hill is the company which has done the design, and it was being acquired by Jacobs. So, I was a part of it. Uh, it at the ending phase of the design, I was there uh, in, in the design process. So I'll show you a few glimpses and I'll also establish the flow. How do you do the design of the Metro Elevated Viaduct? So this would be the contents of my presentation. First, introduction, load calculation, model analysis, and then design. Before that, about quick introduction of my company. So it's it's Midas is a worldwide software company. So we have this branch offices. So I'm from, I'm here situated at Mumbai. So our headquarters is in Seoul, Korea. So we provide softwares in this building, civil, geotechnical, and mechanical. So it's a world leading company in engineering design software. So it's popularly known, as Sir has said, that uh, in the bridge community, it's popularly known. It's the primary software that's used for the bridge design and also for geotechnical high-end analysis. So these are some of the companies which day in, day out use our product, like Arup, Acom, Jacobs, which is there in Hyderabad, uh, Parsons, Becca, all these companies. This is a very partial list, but these are very big consultants who use our softwares. All right, so I, uh, I always um, uh, wanted to start with this for the students because in faculty development or in student uh, interaction programs, we start with this slide. Basically, just to establish what we are doing in the industry because whatever you are learning is, is theoretical concepts in the college. But you have a hands-on in the, uh, on the software as well, but not on the real-time real project, real-time project. So basic idea boils down to one slide if you look at it. It's, it's a, if you see a big picture. So you have any structure, suppose cable stay or silo or any bridge or any building or any structure. Basically, uh, you have this excitation coming on. That excitation can be loads, vibration settlements, thermal changes or any type of input that is coming to the structure. So as a designer, as a structural engineer or a geotechnical engineer or as a civil engineer, basically we try to design this beforehand and then go ahead for the construction. So for this input excitation, we have to find this response. So how this structure gonna behave, how it gonna respond. So that response is me basically includes displacements, strains, stresses, and stress results. Stress resultants are nothing but your bending moment shear force, which are the major uh, resultants, which we use for the design. So we are all after this response. We give this excitation and then find the response. So how do you do that? So uh, with the advent of FEM, finite element method, people started building the numerical models. So once they build the numerical models using a software, you build a structural model. Basically, it is almost close to the reality. How you want your structure to, to be in reality, 
the same thing you replicate in the software. Okay? So once you replicate, suppose you have a cable strip which you replicate uh, in the software, maybe you will use Midas Civil as a software and prepare a structural model. Then you apply these excitations as input loads and then you run a FEM analysis. The FEM solver would be there. That solver, what it does is it takes the loads. It, you have the structural model which has the stiffness F equal to K into X. So F by K gives you the response. So you have the force input, you have the stiffness built in, then you get the responses. Once you get the responses, you can use the design principles, design code philosophy, and then design the structure. That's the entire flow of what we do in an engineering design firm. So we simply do two things here, simplify the structure to a simple structural model and then simplifying the analysis by using FEM. All right, so if you see the next um, uh, is the software aspect. Mida Civil is our flagship bridge engineering software. What it's, uh, most of the people have used STAD, I guess, in, the, in your college days. Uh, currently, you might be using Abacus or ANSYS. Okay, exactly same like that. You have Midas Civil, so it's a software. Uh, this software is mostly customized for bridge engineering. So you have conventional bridges like culverts. You can design them. You can first what you what you have to do is you have to follow these three steps. First is your modeling. Second is your analysis. Third is your design. So you can model culverts, frame, slab bridges, precast, spliced girder bridges, integral bridges. Integral bridges means where you have the superstructure and substructure integral, integrated. So you do not have any expansion joints here. And then you have the steel plate girders. So you have the steel girders which are running. Okay. So here you have the girders as PSC, which is your pre concrete girders. Here you have, you'll have the steel girders. This is more popular in uh, West. In US, even in India, you, you can find these bridges, but most probably, uh, most probably, you would find this in in your flyovers, in in cities. You can find these precast bridges, precast girder bridges. They have steel box girder bridges. These are mostly in Kolkata region. You you'll find this type of steel box girders which are used in the flyovers. Yeah, coming to the long span bridges. So these are conventional bridges because these have the span length less something around like 30 meters or 50 meters max but when you go to more span lengths like when you have a water body or you have obstruction so you have to go for a longer span bridges so those longer span bridges require a different type of construction methodology altogether so based on construction methodology you have different type of bridges that we categorize in it so that is one is your balance cantilever method bridge. So what happens is you build it left side and the right side without taking the formwork help from the ground. Okay. So there is a special cranes that are built, which are called as Derrick cranes. So they move along. They move along in this fashion, left and right. Why do you go left and right simultaneously is because you have to balance the movement on the pier. If you go left continuously, then you will have a lot of movement on the pier. So left one segment, right one segment, left second segment, right second segment. That's how you go and construct the entire bridge. That's why it's called balance cantilever bridge. Second is your incremental bridge. So if you have a uh, steep valley or something like that, you do not have the access to the formwork and those things and you can't cast the concrete as well. So what happens is we cast the concrete aside, the entire bridge segment, I mean the unit wise for a particular length suppose like 10 or 20 meters and then we attach it to a launching nose this is a steel nose we place it on the pier and start pushing it just push it with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the cranes we push it onto the piers so that's why it's called incremental launching method so we push it in increments say 1 meter 1 meter 1 meter 1 meter so uh, so each time the structural configuration changes for the bridge. Okay, that's incremental launching method. Then you have movable scaffolding where the 
scaffolding moves. Then you have this precast segmental, as all of you might have seen the Hyderabad Metro construction. You, this was the method. So all the precast segments are there. They'll bring the precast segments. They erect using this launching girder. They put it in place, and then you do the pre-stressing, and then they they'll keep this in the keep this on the piers. That's your precast segmental method. So in this presentation, we'll briefly go into this precast segmental method bridge construction of a metro, metro wide it, and uh, full staging. This is not fill. This is full staging method. So you full staging is nothing but uh, a regular construction of the bridge where you take the formwork from the ground. Now this seg stage segmental bridges it requires a detailed construction stage analysis because each stage has to be safe and serviceable. Each stage should be uh, designed properly. So you have to use a specialized software for this. That's your Midas Civil. Next is this long span bridges. So once you cross uh, a 80 or 100 meters, after that you have uh very long spans maybe maybe a river which is a, which is almost like 150 or 200 meters wide you so you want to bridge up you want to build a bridge so that time you can go you have to go for this kind of options like cable strip bridge or extra dose bridge or if you are going for a very longer spans then we prefer suspension bridge so the longest suspension bridge of the world is akashi kaiku bridge which is in japan uh at somewhere around one point two kilometers or somewhere I I guess so so, so you, you imagine one kilometer of the main span so so you have to uh, have a specialized analysis for designing the suspension bridges because these are very flexible bridges so you have a lot of large displacement coming into picture and also this extra dose bridges is uh, is nothing but a type of cable strip bridge We'll go more in. We'll not go into details of extra dose bridge, but you can Google it up. We'll get the data. It's it's a cross between the normal girder PSC girder bridge and the cable strip bridge. All right. So overall, I can say that uh, Midas Civil is being used for all these type of bridges. So these are the bridges which is being designed. So these are all the project applications, Chennai Metro. So these are all the real models. I'll quickly skip this. Let's come to the topic of the presentation. One is your metro connectivity in India. So left side, uh, this is the list of Indian cities that are, that currently have metro connectivity. Okay, and right side, uh, as many as like 15 cities in India have over 500 kilometers of metro lines under different stages of implementation. So these are all the cities. So these are some pictures. So long uh, elevated viaducts provide seamless connectivity. So they they create additional movement area without damaging the existing ground level transport network. So the, there are some segmental construction. So you have balance cantilever construction here. So these are called as viaducts. Okay, and uh, you have a dedicated track for the metro. Most of you, this is, this is, I think this is from Hyderabad Metro and this is from Delhi Metro. So this is one balance country when this is a segmental bridge, segmental construction. Uh, unlike road bridges, the riding quality of metros comes from the continuity of the track. Okay. Hence, most of the metro viaducts comprise of simply supported superstructures, except at certain locations where you, are, you need a continuous uh, superstructure. Most of the superstructures are simply supported because you have uh, that's very easy to analyze, very easy to design, and also to construct simply supported bridges. And because of that, uh, because of the climatic conditions of India, you have a lot of ex lot of thermal stresses that would be built up if you have a continuous structure. So rather than designing for that, you can keep the structure as simply supported, and then you can go for longer lengths as a viaduct. So you can see here there is an expansion joint. So 
this pan, this pan are not connected. So there is no force transfer between that because of the expansion joint. That makes the design a lot, easy, a lot easier. See the construction methodologies of our metro, how they are constructed. First is one segmental construction. So where we use the precast segment segments with the use of launching header. We can also have a balanced cantilever construction. It's it would be a continuous bridge. So balanced cantilever way of erection is used. We can go for precast segments in the balanced cantilever construction process, or you can use a cast in situ segments. The others, yeah, launching incremental launching as I told you. The wire, the superstructure can be cast separately and then can be pushed onto the substructures to erect the bridge. That's been done in some parts of the Delhi Metro. Okay. And then the full staging, if, if you have uh, the formwork ready, then you can obviously go for the full staging method. Just take the supports from the ground and then cast the concrete and the superstructure is ready. So what we'll see here is uh, this one span, this being almost the same as our Delhi Metro or Hathabad Metro. Uh, what as a designers we picked is as a 30 meter length, a typical span. What we do is we fix the uh, span as 30 meters and then we continuously uh, uh, erect the superstructures uh, with the 30 meter till uh, Till how much land you want? Maybe 15 kilometers of metro. You have 30 meters. Keep on going until unless the foundation is feasible. So here we have designed isolated foundation. So Hyderabad has rock, so you have isolated foundation that is feasible. So you cannot go for. You don't need for pile foundations. But if some, if uh, if in some circumstances you have um, the soil that is not suitable, then you might be changing the foundation and hence uh, the substructure can be changed and but the superstructure gets fixed so we, we design as a 30 meter superstructure and then we repeat the same uh, construction process same design same reinforcement same pattern throughout the 15 kilometers of the metro so this is the main uh, uh, two span simply support it longitudinal section detail of the bridge so this is two meters isolated foundation then you have a pedestal this is your pier column this is your pier cap this is your seismic arrestor then you have a bearing then you have the superstructure which is your box PSC box section and then there would be an expansion joint in between so selecting the sections, if you look at the superstructure, so uh, superstructure means whatever the part of the bridge which is above these bearings. Above these bearings, the part of the bridge is called superstructure. Below the bearings, whatever the part, whatever the components are there, these are called as substructure as a whole. So in the superstructure, you have different sections, middle section, support section, diaphragm rip section. Why you change these sections? It's because your bending moment changes. In simply supported, you have WL square by 8, which is at the middle. So you will have this section, you know by experience that this middle section is sufficient. But at the diaphragm location, why you have a thick section is because the shear force is more at the supports for a simply supported bridge for a UDL. So that's why we have to change this to provide a uh, to, uh, to to flow, to efficiently design the superstructure basically, such that whatever the forces are coming, you are not over designing the superstructure, nor you are under designing. So you are striking a balance. So that's why we change this cross sections. So if you look at the longitudinal section, it's the diaphragm section exactly about the. Uh, bearings you have a very thicker section with a small opening then you have the support section till 3.1 meter then you have a tapered section so why we are tapering it it's because we want to save the save the material the superstructure concrete material you, you only want th that type of uh, that sectional dimensions which are necessary to resist the forces and then you have the mid section 
so main construction activities how you going to construct this so basically uh, before the design you need to have this construction activities fixed in mind for the segmental construction because we wanted to simulate this in the software and also we have to design each construction stage even the temporary construction stages okay so first is the precast segment first we have the precast segments which are cast the casting the precast segment with reinforcement all different segments as per the drawing are cast and then you have the substructure which are foundation pier and pier cap are erected on the site so this is done in the precast plant then you have the substructure which is done on the site after the after the foundation you have the pier pier cap erection then you have the erection of the segments so launching girder would be kept in place and then you have the truck that comes uh, from the site from the precast plant to the site then you have the lifting of the segments one by one so you keep it in place and then you do the gluing so you stick uh um temporarily and then do a temporary pre-stressing once that is done then you do a post tensioning strand installation bearing plates and wedges at the ends and then you do the jacking jacking of this post tension then you can do a grouting because you wanted to use the bonded tendons and then finishing where we cast the seismic arrestors crash barriers and other works like the the rail works you start laying the track and those stuff so precast plant on the side substructure then you lift it launching girder is in place you keep it you do the temporary pre stressing then the post tensioning the real post tensioning and then you move it okay let's see how we do the design first because before telling the you know, to the contractor or before uh, arriving at the drawings or before uh, telling the precast uh, plan to prepare this type of sections we have to design it so as a designer we have fixed that 30 meters is our sewer span length and some preliminary dimensions where we start with okay so let me open the software So this is our software, which is Midas Civil. Okay, I'll click on New Project. So here you have this is the user interface. This is the tree menu. This is another tab windows where you have the loads, boundaries, properties. So you use all these features. So all these features to prepare your structural model. Okay, I'll show you one quick video. that uh, just a moment yeah i think it started with the properties so basically what we start uh, in the software is you have the properties you have the material properties first so you define this material properties add and then you can directly select concrete so you have this database which is your code I'll select Indian Standard and M30 suppose or M45 as we are doing pre-stressing, so we have to have a higher grade. So we can select M50. Okay. So these are the properties which are taken from the code. So you directly have those. So you add that material property. Then in the section you add a section. So in the section we have many type of sections. So we have to select PSC. Then you have one cell. So you give all these inputs, then you would have a section property. So once those are done, we can start the modeling. So here you have this material properties, then you have the section properties. So the section properties would be something like this. So we have this mid section. So you can see here I have given all these dimensions. So, so I have to freeze one particular type of section. So 
we generally uh, this comes from the experience we generally use uh, this type of PSU box so we have this sectional dimensions mid section diaphragm sections as I've shown you on the PPT the same sections I've uh, created in the software and then you have this modeling started here. So can you listen to the voice of the video? No, no, very, very, it is very feeble. Very feeble. Okay. I'll explain you. Yeah. Once you have created the uh, material properties and the section properties, you can go to create notes and then you can create one note. Mind you, uh, we are only here to in the software to create only line model. We generally prefer line model because uh, it's easy to design. Then you and also you get stress resultants directly, like the bending moment and shear force. If you are making a three D model, then you have a lot of uh, elements, a lot of nodes. The computational power should be more. It's not like you can you cannot design uh, with the three D model. You can do that, but it's tedious. And 1D model is sufficient for us. It's almost like uh, you can say 98% accurate with the 3D full finite element ma uh, model. When you do not have the complexities or a geometrical complexities, like you have a long curvature or you have the stress concentration areas that are built. Only if the stress concentration areas are there, then we go for 3D model. So this superstructure was designed uh, by a 1D model by preparing a 1D model, the longitudinal design. Whereas to be on a safer side, what we do is we do an additional 3D modeling in another software, something like Midas FE or Abacus or ANS as we use. Then we build a 3D finite element model where we use 3D elements and then we check the stresses, whether they are in the limits or not. Okay, that confirms our design. But initially, the pre-stressing, the reinforcement, everything would be designed uh, based on a analysis results of a line model. So we are here to see the preparation of the line model. So I'll create a node. So line model has nodes and beam elements. So I'll select the grade. I'll select the section footing and my footing dimension is something like two meters, suppose. Select it, click apply. So here it shows as a 3D. A lot of uh, students get confused when they see this. This is a line model, basically. It's a line finite element model. But the section is graphically shown. It doesn't mean that you have prepared a 3D model, 3D geometric model. So you are just doing a line model. Then you use the same command, start uh, building the line elements. You already had the sections. So you know the dimensions. So this is 6.5 meter length of peer, ca uh, peer column. So that's, you, you can just drag and drop the sections to the selected elements, it would be assigned. We have the peer cap tapering. This is because so. So we can change this. Uh, dimension it's got reversed so we change them so this is your peer cap so so peer cap top small cell portion where we have the peer cap top yeah. 
then we'll create seismic arrestor. So these are all element, a simple line element that I've drawn with different sections assigned. Next you start with the superstructure line elements. So 30 into 2. So 30 meters, 2 times. Sorry. Uh, two at the rate. So you see, created the substructure. Then we'll start modeling the superstructure. So there are commands here in the software like translate, extrude, those commands. Like you have to give the distance, use these commands then create your line elements. So here we have some 25 mm expansion joint so we provide some load additionally then okay So this is your first node, then you start the extrude. Yeah. So one small portion of a cantilever slab from section see the diaphragm section so this is one diaphragm section so basically line elements You're just creating line elements so you know these distances how did you arrive at these distances no, at the first instance, we do not know these distances, how much length you have to keep the diaphragm, how much length you have to keep the midsection. This comes from uh, iterations. So first you assume some distance, then run the model, get the analysis results, then you check till with distance uh, based on the analysis results, you find out how, uh, the distances of the midsection, diaphragm section, and support section. So, I have assumed some distance, thereby I am keep on creating this line elements for this superstructure. So phi at the rate 3 means those are here 5 times 3 meter length segments. So in this fashion you keep on creating the superstructure. Once you arrive uh, at the full um, superstructure including the substructure. So this completes the modeling. So this is how you prepare a model. So I'll quickly bo go back to the real model because in the short span uh, you are new to the software I cannot explain you all these features so I thought of just giving you a very uh, basic overview of how this metro viaducts are designed. So once you prepare this line models so basically these are nothing but your line beam elements 
and then you have the sections that are assigned. So this button uh, shows you all the sections that are assigned. So it's not a 3D model, it's a 1D model. And once these are done, what we do is we create the boundary conditions. So these are the boundary conditions, fixed supports. You know the soil, uh, we assume it as fixed supports below the isolated footing. Then we create the elastic links. So these bearings which are there, these bearings would be created, um, simulated using the elastic links. This tables, if you go, you have the stiffnesses that are there. So these stiffnesses are your bearing stiffnesses. So you are simulating this bearing with this elastic link. It's nothing but a spring which has some stiffnesses in those directions. Bearing has stiffnesses in X and Y, I mean in the, long, in the longitude and the transverse direction. So we arrange those bearings as that we wanted to reduce the forces on the superstructure and the substructure. So those things you can manipulate here using these springs. Okay, and then we have this rigid links which we say where we connect the bearings. These are your bearings, and then bearing top to the superstructure. So that is the establishment of the boundary conditions and you have the low flow path the flow of loads once you have the loads applied on the su superstructure elements they transfer from the rigid link to the bearing top so we have this elastic links and the elastic links take the forces then they are attached they are uh, uh, connected to the substructure using rigid links again and then from the a bearing bottom to the pier top, the pier cap top, you have the pier cap, then you have the pier column, then the pedestal, then the isolated footing, till the fixer. So that is your load path for this project. So in the software, once you provide this boundary conditions, you have this defined supports, you have elastic links, rigid links, you use these features to, to create uh, this boundary conditions. And after that, you have the loads. So here you have many loads here, like static loads, dynamic loads, settlement, temperature, construction, moving load, all these loads are there. For this bridge, we uh, uh, are designing this bridge for metro loads, primarily for live loads. So those live loads, you have to run a moving load analysis. So moving load analysis means uh, it's the application of the loads through a specified path where this load is moving with an increment. So that is called moving load analysis. Rest all the loads you can apply it as static loads. The codes that you will be using are the IRS codes, which are Indian Railway standard codes. Uh, which are uh, given by the Metro Authority. So you use those codes, calculate all these loads, like your dead load, you know already. You have this wind load, which are coming from the IRS or IS 875. Then you have the braking, derailment, all these loads, which you apply it as static loads onto this line elements. Okay. For the Metro load, you have a uh, a uh, moving load analysis that we have to do that we'll discuss. So that's for the modeling aspect. I'll quickly go back to the presentation and show you the construction process of this bridge. First uh, is direction of the first pan. So launching girder basically it, it, it is applied onto the superstructure. Suppose the launching girder weight is 6000 kN. So this is your launching girder. So this is your distribution of the weight. Just for an example, you have a middle and rear supports, middle and rear supports. This is your first stage. Then the position of position change of the middle and rear support happens. So you see there is a change. So again, there would be a telescopic leg active phase. So this is how they transfer they bring this uh, uh, this ropes together to a particular position and then left it so before that they have to prepare for the launching so in that process there would be a load change 
So that also we have to take care. Then there is a change of loads at the middle and rear support. This moves ahead. Then there is a change of loads. Then the launching girder of the second step. Then you lift it each one by one. You do the temporary pre-stressing and the glue part. And then you do, after that you do the post tensioning and then you keep it on the substructures. Then you go ahead for the next part. So the loads to be considered in this project is the dead loads first, self weight of the bridge and superimposed loads. How do you calculate the superimposed loads? How do you know that? So you don't need to worry, you have to blindly follow the code or the codal guidelines and the metro authority. So they'll tell you what are the super, uh, what are all the live loads, metro loads, what would be the breaking force, what so those calculations are all there. Superimposed loads, you know the wearing uh, the wearing course thickness, you know the density, you'll get the superimposed loads. Live load, you have the metro train loads that would be given by the authority. So you can calculate the curvature, longitudinal force. Temperature loads, that would be given in the code, how much temperature you have to apply. So there would be a seasonal variation and also a day variation. So that is your temperature loads. Then you have wind loads like the longitudinal direction, the transverse direction. Those wind loads will apply them as static loads. Then you have the earthquake loads like longitudinal direction, transverse direction, vertical direction. Based on the seismic zone, you have the code which you can use and then uh, uh, arrive at the earthquake loads and apply it onto your model. And the other loads for metro uh, metro bridges, metro viaducts generally are derailment loads. If a train derails, the load position would change. So th those are called derailment loads. Long welded rails, when the track is long, long welded, uh, continuous welded rail, that would generate additional forces. Nosing forces, forces on parapets, differential settlement can occur of the substructures. The foundations can settle, so those also have to be considered. Then you have vehicle collision as well, which is uh, like if a, if a car collides to the pier. So those conditions also you have to uh, apply on the model. Once you apply to the model which we have created, you will create the load combinations. That is from your IRS code, Indian Railway Standard code from the clause. And you have the ULS and SLS, ultimate limit state and the service limit state. These combinations you prepare, you combine all these loads together with the relevant load factor, then you'll arrive at some particular number of ULS loads and for the SLS loads. Then you perform the design in the software. I'll just show you the design part. So before that, this is the metroloid that we have used. It's 200 kilonewtons, so it's two meters. So there are change in axle. So each axle has 200 kilonewton force, which is acting, and uh, you have two meters, 12 meters, two meter distance, 2.5 meters. So this would be one unit. Like that, you have three units. So in the software, what you do is you go and create this user defined load as a metro load. In the software you select the standard, you have the metro train load, then whatever uh, uh, is the one unit, uh, the metro one unit loading with the spacing, you create it. Once the vehicle is created, you can go to the moving load, you have created the vehicle, you can create a traffic line lane. So this is your first track. This is your first track. This is your first track. And then you have the second track. So two track. One is forward and backward. And then you have the vehicle. Then you define a moving load keys. So it will tell the program that these are my dedicated lanes. And this vehicle, user defined vehicle, has to move on it. So the program will run a influence line uh, analysis kind of moving load analysis and then it will give you the worst, uh, worst, I mean the maximum and the minimum 
uh, for results like the bending moment shear forces displacements all those stuff and the best part here is you can uh, always inquire um, about the loading pattern which is creating the worst uh, result suppose you are getting a bending moment here at 5000 km suppose i'm sure you that uh, if you are getting any bending moment here which is maximum you can inquire about which loading position it is creating that maximum moment so that features are also there okay we'll go to the results part now it's a quite extensive model in fact i'm trying to summarize uh, entire process here so and also if you want a response spectrum analysis you can do a response spectrum analysis as well or you can apply it as a static uh, seismic coefficient method you can use and apply it as a loads but we uh, that depends on the coding guidelines we generally do a response spectrum analysis rather and we will not go for the time stay analysis because this is a hyderabad metro project so and we have uh, uh, we have the uh, the seismic zone as two or three here. Okay, so once you have applied the loading, then you could uh, you can go to the analysis, perform analysis. Once you perform analysis, you can go to the results. Then you can go to the reactions, dead load, click apply. Undisplay the links. So these are your reactions for dead load case. Okay. Then you have uh, any other loading case. Suppose for live loads, you can see the reactions. Okay. Then you have the deformations for live loads. So these are your exaggerated deformations. So it's only 0 0.011 meter. around 10 mm so you can change the units here it's around 10 mm for the live loads then you can go to the forces beam diagrams as we are using line elements we can go select the my bending click apply so this is your simply supported bending moment for which we'll be designing so it should be kilometer meter so it's this and you can go to the moving load tracer you can go to this uh, beam force and moments select the element click apply so this is your vehicle position which is causing that maximum bending at that particular location so you can backtrace which loading position it and is causing the maximum or minimum effects so that's for the result part. This is how you check. You can go to the stresses, check the stresses. Once you get uh, individual uh, results for all these load cases, you have to combine it using load combination, as I've shown you. So we prepare this kind of load combinations where we pull all the all these load cases and combine it as per the code guidelines for the load combination preparation. Then we'll use this ULS and SLS for the design so you here you have the post tensioning also so in the post tensioning we provide the profiles so profiles we provide so this profiles have to be how do you calculate the eccentricity a lot of people ask us uh, how do you uh, arrive at this eccentricity there's no uh, uh, direct answer for this I mean it depends on the loading so it depends on your de dead load and your permanent loads. So for, for, for starting, you have to run an analysis, freeze your sections, and then you have to, um, you have to manipulate this tendon profile coordinates, okay? Such that everything is under limits and it's not over designed. So you can so you can increase the number of stands, you can decrease them, you can increase the forces, you can change the eccentricity. All these parameters are the this design parameters. So you can do a optimization of this tendon profiles and the sections together 
to arrive at a perfect design which is very efficient okay that's your load combinations your design everything is done then you go for the PSC tab here you select the code you select the parameters here like I want the ultimate limit state design ultimate bending resistance shear resistance torsion resistance these are all as per IRS so there are calculations once you get the analysis results you use that and the design you you'll arrive at the capacities now the bending resistance the resistance shear resistance then you compare it with your analysis bending demands bending moment demand shear demand torsional demand so those checks those calculations have to be done as per the code so serviceability checks the stresses should be under permissible limits at various stages at construction stage at service loads all these parameters are given as per the code so those are all inbuilt in the program you can select the design position which position you can have to select and just hit perform design once the design is performed you can click on the excel report this generates a full fledged excel report from the software kind of this excel report so this element, this is 10th element in the model. You have the ultimate moment, positive moment. You see this bending moment. So this has come from the analysis. Now we'll use the design uh, concepts like the design strength. We have this neutral axis calculation as we have learned uh, in our RCC that how do you, uh, you iterate the neutral axis to make the C, C by T ratio as, as one. So the software tries to do that in, in iterations then it calculates the neutral axis depth for this section including the pre, uh, pre-stress components so you have the tendon strands how many strands that you have given in the program so the stresses and then you have the ultimate st uh, the, the stresses that you have the strains it will calculate then you have the force in this tendons then you have the moment resistance calculation then you'll arrive at the resistance then you'll compare it with the demand so if you see here it's been under designed here it's fading here so I wanted, you wanted to show you that every time uh, you have to check this so you have to go through till the end Till the moment resistance because there are many number of parameters so you can change the section dimension you can increase the strands so it when it comes ng what you do is you see the ratio so it's it's lacking behind so you can increase the number of strands and try first and if it doesn't fit then you go for the sectional change okay similarly you have negative moment shear force you have okay 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 everything is okay torsional resistance these are all as per the irs code so you have the code clauses, you have the formulas given in the code based on the analysis results and the sectional information and the reinforcement information. You start calculating this, uh, this values, and then you do the design. Do the bending resistance, shear resistance, torsional stress at construction stage, principal stress checks, all these checks, tendon stress checks. So I, I did not select that, that's why it's showing zero. So it does all the, the software does all this checks and gives you a ready-made uh, Excel sheet. It's prudent to check uh, each of these calculations manually before submitting to uh, the proof checker or, or attaching it to the project report. All right, uh, so that's how you do the Metro Wired modeling analysis and design so thank you so much i think uh, i've continuously uh, started bombarding with a lot of data here so any comments any questions yeah i'll be happy to answer yeah i think uh, we can open the thank you thank you suman uh, nice presentation and you give a nice overview of uh, how the entire process is done in Midas. I mean, it was really good. Uh, now we can open the floor for discussions. So those students who have questions, kindly raise your hand 
and uh, we will go one at a time maybe 10 more minutes we can take and we can close yes, um, please raise your hand if you have any questions yes i see somebody who is that okay uh, narayana kumar has a question is it Okay. Is it Midas has separate toolbox for metro rail analysis? Yeah, in the metro rail, in the moving load analysis, you can select India as a standard, mm -hmm. and then you will have the vehicles. So we can define it from the code. Metro rail mostly they are customized uh, for that project, so you can use a user user defined command and then uh, create the metro rail load, the axle loads. Any other questions? Okay, from student side particularly, you know, please feel free. Because you're all taking now priestess design as well, right? You know, don't don't feel shy, you know, whatever could be the question. So someone was a student like you. Exactly. Seven, eight years ago, right? When did you graduate, Suman? 2015 or uh, 14? Yes, 15, sir. 15, yeah. So time flies very quickly, right? Yeah. yeah I have a question, couple of questions, in fact. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, students may pick it up from there. You know, when you do post-engineering system analysis, frictional losses are going to be quite significant, right? Um, and also, I know here we are doing a simply supported girder. So you're not getting any secondary reactions per se. Uh, but when you go for a continuous system, that is again is going to be a big factor, right? So how does uh, Midas, uh, how does the modeling of such things are done in uh, Midas? So, uh, regarding the secondary effects, mm -hmm. what we do is we uh, create the construction stage analysis. So we create the actual construction process we simulate in the software. So that time, uh, if your structure is a continuous, what happens is you have a primary effect and a secondary effect that is coming on because of the continuity. That can also be simulated. So the tendon which you uh, create, so that if it is continuous, then you have the hyperstatic effect, which is your secondary effect coming into picture. As you have built in the data inside the software, so it, uh, uh, it creates that hyperstatic effect in a separate load case, which you can use it for the design in your load combinations. So that would be considered, but uh, the, yeah, that that can be governing as well sometimes. Yeah, and uh, in terms of like say, especially when you go for segmental construction, you do start you know tensioning them in stages, right? Again, that also probably you're including that uh, stressing sequence as well in the uh, construction stage analysis, right? Yes, sir. yes. I'll show you one model here, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one continuous structure. Okay, so here you have this balance cantilever fashion construction. So the same stage is how it is built in reality. The same thing we simulate in the software. Same thing we simulate in the software. And here, whatever the tendons that you see here, sir, so those are till only those lengths. Correct. Yeah. So you model all these tendons which are acting like my, all these uh, tendons which are there in various stages. Everything has to be manually uh, modeled here. Yeah. So, so as you are doing, as you are giving every information to the software, the secondary yeah. effects would be captured. Yeah. And in, again, you know, in continuous system, like correctly you said, you know, the temperature and shrinkage issues, you know, can be quite a bit. Again, you know, what kind of, again, long term effects, yes. right? Creep, shrinkage, you know, relaxation of steel, all these things. Uh, do you explicitly model it in an iterative manner or you consider long term, uh, you know, or uh, lumped uh, values, you know, to start with? How does Midas does it? So we do a exact analysis uh, of the of the losses. So we calculate the losses. So if you see this 
uh, command in the mm. tenon property we give the data here to the software mm. the ultimate strength yield strength the curvature friction factor the wobble friction factor the anchorage slip 6 mm anchorage slip at the end so the tenon data we have given <laughs> and then we have given the profile as well right right so and also the sectional dimensions so based on that data based on the duration we also give the time dependent material properties it's nothing but your as per cbfip or astro code you give the how your creep is changing how is your creep coefficient changing i'll show you that see see the creep curve that is there the creep curve with the duration with the duration like 100 days 200 days 1000 Days, ten thousand days. So, so you pick up your input property, or uh, you know, it, it is calculated automatically by code. So you give only few uh, data, uh, uh, and then you select this India code, Ashto, or those codes. These graphs would be uh, built in in the program. Those would be pulled in, and then from there you have the creep coefficients. Then it uses those. so time dependent properties are there you have the tenon properties there profile there and the section is there so it will calculate all the losses first the immediate losses the frictional losses the creep shrinkage losses because of the creep and shrinkage also you would have the tenon losses so those also it will calculate and also the relaxation of the steel all those things it will calculate the losses and the effective pre stress is been applied to the structure that you can check the tenon primary and then also the secondary effect priestess the secondary effect of the primary priestess so those to those results all these things would be coming into different load cases so those you can pull it to your load combinations and go ahead for the design no i, I think this is for the benefit of the students that i am asking and any anyway, one one more question from leo i'll come to that later so you know we have all this you know uh, sophisticated packages but you know we try to insist that you always need to check your results with hand calculations you know how how seriously you know you do that to make sure that your results are correct or within the acceptable engineering you know judgment uh, in your projects very so just for the benefit of students that i am uh, asking yeah very often sir very very frequently we do that because software is a, is kind of a black box so if your input is uh, has some mistakes then the output has a mistakes so you you as as you would be sticking to your deadlines what happens is you miss some inputs or you make some errors in the inputs and that might give you a gross error in the design which you you cannot find out so those things you can only Uh, find out by doing a quick manual calculation of your results or quickly having a uh, a check of a reactions maybe a self weight reaction which you can quickly calculate from a calculator or you you can prepare a small excel sheet and just calculate the bending moment capacity which is independent of the analysis you know the section you know the pre stress as we used to do in our coursework the same thing we do uh in the firms as well i trade the neutral axis uh, what if analysis we use we get the minimum capacity we check it with the software so manual calculations are must so the fundamentals you cannot ignore them yeah. very crucial so oh. well, that, that was my question as well you know for such a simple model of course your cross sections are changing but but if you want to do the analysis for a simply supported thing and you know it will be very easy to do in fact uh, hand calculations uh, you know of course you know when your spans are different multiple spans are different and your sections are different it becomes a little laborious but uh, you know uh, quickly we can do that using using fundamental concepts that is yes. what i was uh, trying sure, to sure. Uh, get yeah, yeah even we do that as well simply supported mm. we generally check wl square by 8 though the sectional dimensions are changing it should be somewhere close to that if you are taking mm. a thicker section conservative side this should be your maximum bending moment right. in software right. so that's how we cross very good yeah leo uh, one final question from leo uh, how to make sure that the tendons are positioned in correct place such that it comes in concrete sections because you have already mentioned that you model it like a line model so basically is looking at the profile of the tendon how do you exactly give that No, it's a line model, Leo. But you know, he's specifying the variations of the profile. I'll let Suman answer this. Yeah, uh, yeah, Leo. That's a good question. 
see, let me, I think I've closed the model. Let me open it. Up. Okay. Uh, So this is a line model. And these are the tenant profiles that I've created. So how do you arrive at this tenant profiles is your question, right? So this is a little uh, iterative process. Simply supported, we already know what is your bending moment. So before arriving at the profiles, what we do is we delete this profiles first, then run a simple analysis. Then you get a bending moment for the self fit. Once you get the bending moment for the self fade or the SIDL combined together as a permanent load, then you have the bending moment. Then you know the jacking jacking force or the jacking stress. So you you know the ultimate stress as 1860. You'll uh, you'll uh, take it as 0.8 percent. I mean I mean 0 0.8 of that. That is 80 percent of your jacking stress as 80 uh, percent of your uh, yield strength yield stress as your jacking stress. So you got the moment and the force. So you divide by that, you'll get the eccentricity. So what we do is we prepare a small Excel sheet. So you are, you are, what you're asking is a preliminary design that we say. Just, I'll show you that Excel if I have. I think I have. Yeah. See, uh, so. I think it doesn't have those calculations, but yes, the bending moment, you know, the jacking force, you know, you divide by that, you'll get the eccentricity. So you, that's how you lay and prepare your coordinates for the tendon profile. And how many number of tendons, it, it is also an iterative process that comes from the experience. And uh, how do you make sure uh, that the tendon passes through your section? That's why you have to freeze the sections first. That's why you have to freeze these sections first, these sections. Once these sections are freezed, how they are changing uh, on the superstructure, you have to know. And then you can keep the tendon uh, at this location, at the center location. And also there are codal guidelines to have a minimum cover distance to this tendon ducts. So that's how you finally arrive at the tendons. And uh, sometimes the, it, it happens that you have designed completely till the end. There are some loadings that have changed. M maybe some load factor was taken incorrectly. Then, uh, then the tendons might not be sufficient. Then you have to increase the number of tendons. That, that time you have to define another profile, other coordinates. Okay, thanks. Nice, nice. Uh, thank you, Suman. Uh, Surendra, Dr. Surendra, you have any questions, comments before we can? Uh, also, I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, we try to post, post it in LinkedIn and all. I think several of our old students have also joined. I'm good to see that. I think, you know, at this point of time, you know, I, I mean, a lot of students are there. Chiranjeevi is there. He did PhD from our place. Karthik is there. He did recently completed his PhD. Uh, from our department, I see several names, you know, hello to everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. I mean, keep in touch. Uh, yeah, Swain, any questions, comments? Yeah. Come on, yeah, it's, it's good to see this presentation immediately after that LNDs for Metro Train thing. This is more practical in the software set. And the LND person also mentioned that they have actually used this Maya software. Right. Apart from that, also uh, students can really see them those way. They could be a few years down the line, given that they have seen one of their own very fellow batchmates of uh, yeah. masters from our IIT has so, Yes. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. taking a look at this thing. Thank you. Thank you. So, Suman, you know, you should. Uh, we wish you great success in your career, and we want you to be one day. CEO of of some very <laughs> reputed company are you know make a company of such uh, you know stature and come back and recruit our students that is our request. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sir. It was glad working yeah. with you, sir. I remember all those days. Time flew yeah. away, but yeah, from small temporary campus like 
but it was very good course i said the curriculum is same like the same rcc and psc that you are uh, yeah we have but uh, yeah we have uh, you know added some new courses as well but you know as you know our curriculum is designed in a very balanced way so that you get you know mechanics courses some computational aspects plus design aspects but what we realize is you know if you are very strong in analysis and mechanics design is one thing you know that you can really pick it up yes right yes. uh that that was the line of thinking that we had and uh, now we have two more colleagues who will be joining so probably uh, next academic year we will be start introducing some additional electives as well that is in discussion but pretty much uh, whatever you studied you know with little bit of mo- modifications pretty much it is going to be almost 90% it would be same yeah the the one no. which helped me a lot was uh, that moment coverage calculation the neutral axis calculations uh, you have the change of the concrete rate the, those things which we used to do on the lab used to calculate in excel right, so right. those yeah. things those things are uh, very much used in the firms oh so. thank you thank you i'm glad you told me that <laughs> validating that at least uh, yeah. what whatever we are doing is not a waste of time for the students <laughs> no it's, it's not it a very useful stuff that we did in iit hyderabad yeah thank you thank you very much all right so thank really so appreciate much. it and your classmate chiranji chiranji was there i don't know he's still there hi chiranji how are you hi hi how are you where are you right now i am in south korea but sir South Korea. Wow. Oh, South Korea. My company is also in South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard Midas there. Yeah, maybe, but I'm in, not in Seoul. Like I'm in Busan. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. Both of your classmates, right? Uh, Chiru and Sumon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Good, good, good. Very nice. Only Very six good. people, right? Uh, oh, that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in fact, you know, a lot of uh, people have worked in company. Now, this time, our M Tech strength is almost, uh, I would say, twenty-two or twenty-three. You know, uh, only structures. And, we were uh, yeah, we were only. Hmm. We were only eight at the time. It's like eight members. Right, right. <laughs> oh, so you guys are flag bearers for us. You guys have done well, so the program is popular, and students are joining, and we are glad to note that. Yeah. So good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, regarding yeah. the recruitment sir recruitment yeah, yeah you can send us the you can send me some profiles like the resume yeah. cvs yeah. sure i'll give a reference definitely, definitely. You know, we have you know as usual placement process in place uh, unless you have some specific requirement then we say but otherwise you know uh, generally we request you to register you know through placement office we will request our placement office to get sure, in touch sure sure that would be better sir. yeah Yeah. All right. Uh, really appreciate it. You know, thank you, Dr. Surendra, for coordinating. And you know, I should, you know, uh, really thank you for having accepted this invitation and was willing to give a presentation in a very short notice. You know, just two three days before, uh, I just got hold of Suman in LinkedIn and I just gave him a message. You know, and he immediately accepted it in spite of his busy commitment. And we really. App- appreciate it and uh, thank you very much and you know we would be really we would be really glad to host you in person because you know your person you have not seen much of our new campus and uh, a lot of things have come along so we welcome you okay yeah thank you so much it's glad to be a part of this presentation okay. yeah thank you thank you all right thank so you all please, students for joining yeah, thank you dr surendra sir so, uh, chiranjeet has raised his hand so suman just yes. give us a minute chiranjeet sure, sure. no, 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 it's not it's not for the question actually oh it's for something <laughs> else okay all right so if there are no questions i don't want to take too much of time from suman so really appreciate it suman dr thank you to seminary society our student coordinators you can see our cs is very very active and we try to you know bring uh, alumni like you and the famous experts and you know we record and think youtube also you upload a lot of uh, these very useful videos and it has become really popular among the structural engineering and civil engineering community i would like to thank again the student volunteer dharanjay and his team cs team uh, for quickly putting this thing together really appreciate it dharanjay any final words and we can close the like, 
I will also like to thank uh, like engineer Suman Dhara for this informative seminar. Like I hope all the students also would have been uh, feeling glad and would be very much helpful for these students. Also, Dr. Surya Prakash, uh, Dr. Surinna Sumala, thank you so much, sir, for guiding us during this seminar. So that was from CSI. Right. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.